here we saw to prove that batch content is possible and it's efficient. And here I'm going to do it, right? I have asked ChatGPT to create 30 topics for me to talk about in 30 minutes. Now I'm going to take a minute to tell you what I'm doing. And then I'm going to engage into as many of these as I can. Some of them aren't useful to me. Some of them talk about things that I've got no interest in and I don't want to really get involved in. I'm not an expert in those areas, so I'm going to avoid those. So I'm not going to get all 30 done, but I'm going to do this at pace, at speed, and we're going to see what happens. I'm going to release this full video with everything in there, and I'm also going to release the individual clips on my LinkedIn drip feed it out. You tell me whether they work or not. All right, today we're going to talk about the power of short form video for public speakers. Why is that crucial for today's landscape? Short form video is as much information as people are willing to take in in any one sitting. Our attention span's gone. As a nation, as globally as humans, our attention span is zero right now. Three, five, seven seconds maximum is all you've got to capture people's attention before they scroll on. So this isn't just for public speakers who want to engage with their audience. This is for everyone. This is really valid is if you want to get people's attention, you need to attract it in the first three, five seconds. Um, short form video content is building trust. If every piece of video you put out adds value to a particular person, eventually they're gonna start watching your longer form stuff or reading your longer form content, and they will find their way to your website, book into your calendar. If you think they're gonna go straight to your podcast, you're kidding yourself. Creating engaging short form videos. So this moves on from what I talked about the last uh, minute, <laughs> the last minute. So um, creating engaging short form videos is about getting that hook in, in the initial three to five seconds. As we said, like content has to be short, make it engaging, give them something in that first three to five seconds that they can get hold of and know exactly what they're gonna get out of this. Um, some people call it a hook line. If you're writing a post, you have a hook line. Videos are the same. What's, you know, I'm going to tell you in 60 seconds why short form videos need to be engaging. Doesn't need to be any more than that. I hope that's useful. Did it in less than 60 seconds this time. Video content strategy. Why is that important to most business owners? Lots of us just flop content out all over the place. I've been guilty of that. I've done it. What we actually need to do is to take our audience on a journey from no idea who you are to, wow, you're an expert. We do that by showcasing ourselves in lots of different aspects and angles. First up, you need to know who you're targeting. And I mean, know them. So pick an ICP, an ideal client persona, understand them, find out who they are, know what makes them tick. Use ChatGPT to help. It's brilliant at it. And then start talking to their pains, challenges, and concerns. Do it strategically. So what do they care about most? what is the broadest problems that they're facing and then niche right the way down. So you can give them content that, that at every stage of their journey funnels them further down your pipeline. That's your strategy. Do it by month, break it down into topics per week, do it into topics per day, and then talking points per day. Job done. Personal branding through video, the bit everybody gets wrong. People think it's about representing their business brand. It's not. It's about representing your personal brand. Your business brand is irrelevant. Javelin, content management, nobody cares. They care that whether I know what I'm talking about or not. I don't know whether I do. You, you can tell me whether I do or I don't. <laughs> but your personal brand is way more important. So if you go out and look at influencers in the wider world, people who are authors who are doing really well for themselves, they're speaking all over the world, they don't represent a business brand. They have their own personal brand. It's separate from their business brand. Most people only know the influencer now, I have a clue who the person is. Todd Capone, sales melon. Todd Capone is the person I know. I don't, like, I know his business is sales melon because I do a lot with him. But Todd Capone is the entity that I understand, empathize with, and have connection with. Make your personal brand more important than your business brand. Maximize an impact through social media platforms. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that every social media platform has its own unique take on things. LinkedIn is B2B, largely very little B to see on here. Very professional, educational, informative. You go to TikTok, there's a growing B2B community there. So what's the difference? Well, it tends to be a bit more organic, a bit more out in the field, a bit more he is me and a day in the life of me, and it's on a mobile video. 
what I'm saying here is that every social media platform has its own unique capabilities. And if you want to tell your entire story, you need to tell your personal side as well as your business side. If you're uncomfortable telling your personal side on LinkedIn or you don't think it's working for you, take it to the other social media channels and use it there. So link people off. If you want to find out more about my journey from retail, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on TikTok. Don't, because I don't share much different on there, to be honest. I'm comfortable on LinkedIn, but I don't represent a corporation. There's the difference. Think about which platform is best for you and make sure that you can follow up. If you're going to reach out on another platform, make sure you create enough content for that platform that makes it worthwhile people following you out there. The art of storytelling in short form video is something that's really useful for people. We all tell stories. We all respect people who tell stories, right? So you've got a beginning, you've got a middle, you've got an end. What do you want people to do at the end of that short form video? Do you want them to follow you? Is that something you put in the video? Do you want to put it in the post? Have a call to action. That's your end. Then you've got the meat of the video. I don't even think about the title of what I'm going to write about unless I know what the meat is in the middle. Tell people the story that you want to tell them. Take them on that journey. Start off as though they don't know anything about it. Tell them what you want them to know. Ask them what their inputs are. Give them the outputs at the end. Always make sure that you've got that call to action somewhere, whether it's in the text or in the video. Building a video content calendar. Is this useful for you? If you're considering short form video, it's probably something that you think that you need. I'm going to go against convention here. You don't need it. Bollocks. You don't need it. If you've got a content strategy, which you should do, which tells you by by month, by day, by week, whatever, whatever level you want to break that down to, what you should be talking about or what topics you should be covering during that week, you don't need a calendar. What you need is a good social media platform to put your posts out so that it's organised in categories or in days or both, not just a standard queue. Standard queue is great for starting out. You want categories because then you can populate each category in batch and that's much more effective and easy to do. But do I need a calendar for my video content? No, what a waste of time. Engagement tactics in short form videos. How to encourage viewer interaction. That's an interesting one. Um, I think for me, it very much depends on which platform you're more active on. And since I'm talking predominantly on LinkedIn here, I'm going to weigh in this at LinkedIn. Um, I think it's about showcasing your opinions and expertise on a particular subject, but then asking for inputs and, and feedback on that. So again, if you've got any of your own engagements that you would use in short form videos or in any videos, I'd love to hear what your video um, engagement ideas are. What do you use to uh, attract people's attention? Is it a subscribe link? Is it animations? Is it, you know, um, do you offer giveaways? What do you do? How does that work for you on LinkedIn and is it successful? Leveraging video testimonials. That's the next section that we're going to talk about. Um, video testimonials are hugely powerful because people buy people. Um, I trialed writing out testimonials as images. So I got people to recommend me. I would then put that into an image and I would put that image out on social media. What I realized was that I was missing a human element because what happens is when you put that person's face on there, their photo on that image, it changes things and it's no longer a set of words, it's attached to that human. That's very important. So take that one step further. If you can get people to do video testimonials and there are complete applications out there that help you capture these easily, they are by far and away the most important. I've got one from the fantastic Joe Leach on mine and it's superb. I direct everyone there where I can. Um, very important to get and something that gives lots and lots of social proof if you're a behavioural science fan, you know what I'm talking about. You need that social proof in every element that you do if you want to be seen as an expert in what you do. Creating a video series is something that I've played about with recently. I'm doing it right now. If you want to see more of this clip, if you want to see more of this content, follow me tomorrow. Um, and it's something that I think encourages people to check back in. What you want to do is you want to create a habit. You want people to come back and look at your profile on a regular basis. You want them to know who you are, expect you to be posting, you consistently post, and you tell them what they're going to find tomorrow. Usually, you leave them with a cliffhanger at the end of your content. Um, it's not always possible to do in short form. I think that's really hard to do well in short form video content. 
But think Netflix. You get to the end of a Netflix episode, they never just end the episode. It's always on a cliffhanger and everybody wants to come back and watch the next one. So if you want to stop watching Netflix, you've got to stop halfway through an episode, right? That's how it works. Make your content the same. Behind the scenes clips are really interesting and it's something I'm going to play about within 2024. I want to show a little bit more about um, the sorts of things that I do um, on a daily basis. And I'll, you know, maybe, I don't know how that relevant that is for LinkedIn. It's something I'm going to try. Um, but behind the scenes clips, I think generally is you unfiltered, un like unpolished, organic, just you being who you are, what are your thoughts on X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And I think that is really what that talks to is, you know, if you want to get behind the scenes, who is Paul Banks? Like, be nice. Yeah, I can see you at the back. Um, be nice. But um, you know, that's what it is. It's like, just show them who you are. Just be afraid, be a bit vulnerable. Um, show them what, what your real thoughts and thinkings are and how you actually work. Talk to them about how you do things. Stop being worried that you can give away all your secrets. They can't replace you. So they might go away and try what you said. All that's going to do is cement in their minds that you're an expert. They're not going to think, ah, he's giving away all of their secrets there. I'm just going to not bother paying their services now. It doesn't work like that. Partnering with industry leaders. This is really useful. So partner with people who can offer an alternative opinion, offer an alternative expertise, um, can magnify your own opinion or expertise, who are already kind of credible in their own right. And these people, more often than not, if you give them an opportunity to talk on your video, on your feed, on your posts, or to, to link with them and call posts with each other, or even if it's just text, that has a really positive effect because in people's minds, they see you and combine the two of you together. So your leverage and their expertise and their credibility. I did this to break into contact center world for a year and a half. I was talking to industry leaders, people like um, Alex Mead, um, people like Steve Sullivan, Joel Walker, lots and lots of different people who are fantastic. Marianne Withers, people who are fantastic influencers in their own right, already set up and credible. I was no one, I had no experience in that industry and I leveraged their experience by bringing them to my video series and I also educated myself at the same time. It's great to have people who challenge our thoughts and thinking. Collaborate with people, 100%, and make sure if they have their own podcast or whatever, if you're doing some video content with them, make sure you get on theirs as well. Like what goes around comes around. Repurposing long form content is literally what I do. So that's the next thing I'm gonna talk about is everybody has long form content, usually most people, all right, not everyone. Um, but whether you've got a podcast, whether you've got a webinar, whether you do interviews, whether you've got keynote speeches that you have, are all great ways for you to generate far more content. And it's actually the basis for batch creating content as well. So sit down, record yourself for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, talking about a specific set of topics, your knowledge and expertise on it, and then chop it up. Why, why do you need to sit and create 10 or 15 three minute videos every morning, like to, to, to get yourself through the day. Just do it all at once, or even better, use content you've already got and repurpose it. Call to action is really important for everyone. So a call to action is what you want your viewers to do next. So it's all great and well producing video content, telling them what you, how much of an expert you are, engaging with them, getting them to believe in you, see you as an expert, that's fine. But so what? So if somebody's interested in you and they wanna know a bit more, and they want to not take the next logical step. Don't leave it in their hands to figure out what that is. Do the work for them. Tell them what you need them to do next. In my case, it's go and have a look at my LinkedIn profile. Read it. Tell me if you think I'm an expert. If you go and read my profile, there's another call to action there that tells you what to do about it. Email me, paul at javelincontent.com. Simple as that. Live video versus pre-recorded is a debate that's gone on for quite some time. Live video takes balls, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna look you right in the camera eye here, or I'm gonna, all right, I'll look you right in the camera eye here, because it's really hard when the camera's off to the side. All right, but um, seriously, live video, when you hit that go button, it's really tough to do, because your mouth just flaps for like, for like minutes, minutes, it's horrible. And um, you do get used to it, that's what I will say. It's the same as if you're getting on stage, you do get used to it, so, 
what I would say is if you want to do it and you're scared of it, good. Everybody is. Get over that. Stop using it as an excuse. Get on and do it. Do it again. Do it again. By the time you get to four or five of these done, you'll become the expert and the people coming on your show will be the people that are a bit flummoxed and a bit... Your job is to help them get over that as well. My preference is a mix of both. Pre-recorded video is great for those sessions that you just can't fluff up, right? You want them to be perfect or you want them to go out on a schedule when, you know, when it's comfortable for other people but not necessarily when you're available. Live video is great for those times where you've boxed it off where everybody should be available or reasonably and you can just create something organic and the impact of the live can be so much better because people can come and test your expertise and you can respond in person there and then. Um, I'll link to it, my preferred platform for doing that in the comments. Um, maximum impact editing tips. Do you know what? I don't think this is as big a thing as it used to be years ago. Um, my tips for maximum impact on editing your videos are these. Get rid of the fluff. You don't need it. Make sure you've got no embarrassing pauses at the beginning or the end. And if you want to transition between scenes, so it might be that you delete a whole two, three paragraphs out the middle. Don't just cut from one to the other unless it's intentional. Use a transformation across that, so like a crossfade where it just fades nicely from one end to the other. You'll see it in my videos a lot. I'm a big fan of that. Um, if you do want to just cut from one scene to another, zoom a bit. So it looks like you've intentionally zoomed in. And if you're being smart enough, you've recorded with a second camera. I'm not there yet. You've recorded with a second camera, you can cut to the other camera view. It does work really well. But for me is having, you know, person here, two thirds, eyes should be two thirds of the way up the screen person should be centered, ideally eye contact with the camera. If you're looking at a screen, make sure your camera's just above it slightly um, and that your video of yourself is dead center just underneath the camera. So literally my camera is here. My person is here, my person, yeah. So do that. That is the best way to create engaging content for LinkedIn, especially. If you're out in the field, the rules change drastically. I'm not gonna, I'm not a TikTok guru. I'm not going to lecture on that, but there are people out there that will be far better at explaining that. Public speaking challenges. So I said this was going to be aimed predominantly at public speakers, right? You're out there, you're talking to people every day of the week. You're talking to people about why you're the expert in your industry, why they should hire you to come and deliver the keynote speech. So here's a thought. When you're on video talking to your social media audience, tell them about the challenges that you solve through your public speaking. So give away parts of your speech. Um, you don't need to give away the actual speech. Tell them the problems that you're seeing. Um, you know, everybody has a set number of speeches that they deliver. Um, so talk about the, the topics and themes from within those and how that relates to current events and current economic climate and things that you're seeing in the world. Use those because that's the way that you demonstrate to them that you really do understand the challenges and problems that they have right now. As a public speaker, you can showcase your individual speaking style. So I am set down at the moment. There's nothing to stop me standing up at the back of the room, delivering the way I would if I was talking in a, in a real life audience. If you can showcase some of the passion and energy and uniqueness that you have as a public speaker on a regular basis from your office, from your, you know, from your room, your house, wherever, you give people a flavor of what it is to have you up on, on stage in front of their candidates, their clients, their employers, their whoever. And that's going to help create that starting point for conversations. Oh yes, I, I, I do really like that style. That's something that we, I've not seen anything like that before. Well, I like the humor that's involved there. So I kind of think of every day as a miniature performance. Don't have to do it every single day, but you know, two, three times a week. Just, just think. Utilizing video for event promotion. So a lot of people use traditional methods. They will advertise. They'll put tickets out. They'll create a LinkedIn event, maybe if it's digital. Um, they tell people via their newsletter. All these things are brilliant. What about video? Everybody forgets video as a way of communicating things. So what I always do when I create my newsletter, I will create a a, a written newsletter, but I understand also that not everybody um, ticks information in visually. 
Some people want to see that audio. They want to listen to it in the car. Some people want to read it as text. Some people want to see a person performing it almost. So don't forget when you're got a, when you've got a gig coming up, you know, you've got a speaking engagement coming up. You actually want to get on video and share that with your newsletter audience. Share it with your social media audience, um, and just get it out there as much as you can. Um, even if it's not related to the actual engagement itself, but it's telling a little bit of your story that might make people say, actually, this person is really interesting and I want to go along to that engagement. I want to hear them speak. It's free advertising. And who better to advertise you than you? Overcoming camera shyness. I speak to loads of business owners who are camera shy. And it's weird because in their own right, they're very competent, very confident people who have no trouble articulating their, their industry, their challenges that they solve, their products, their services. It's, it's interesting. As soon as you hit go on a camera, they all block up, start humming and erring, filler words all over the place. What I would say is work with someone. So you can either go the route, you know, and, and I'm talking here to public speakers predominantly, so it's ironic, right? But even then, it's different to being on a stage. People do get camera shy. They get self-conscious speaking to a camera when there's nobody else in the room, for example. So I would always say, if that's you, then you probably want to work with somebody, a friend, a colleague, a partner, or, you know, I, I provide like, I provide journalists to help my clients get through their um, initial videos where they, you know, kind of ask them the right questions to make sure that the right sort of value is being driven from the conversation. Um, so I love that approach because it, it makes me scalable because I can use other people to do this. And journalists are very kind of, very well educated and trained in the art of getting information out of people and, and helping them reveal who they actually are, which is what you want to do. Um, so if you're camera shy, just work with somebody who can ask you questions, who can tell you things as you go. They don't need to appear on the final video. They can be edited out. They can even be in the same room. They could be on a phone whispering in your ear and you have them on a, a, a wireless headpiece. And there's all sorts of different ways of doing this. Um, but for me, camera shyness, um, you need to repeat and repeat and repeat until you're overcome that to an extent. You never get rid of it. I hate seeing myself on camera. I hate the sound of my voice but I know it works, so I carry on doing it regardless. You've got to keep that faith, the knowledge that it will drive results, and it does, but it's hard to start out, and I get it. You will get better over time. You'll get less shy over time. You will feel more confident doing it. Um, and if you are a public speaker that, that struggles with that camera shyness, reach out and let me know, because I think that's an interesting dynamic. Um, and I know people that, that have that problem you know, even though they, they get up on stage in front of hundreds of people, actually recording them on camera makes them really anxious and nervous. It's interesting. Networking through video content. So whilst the majority of your video content should always be to um, add value to your ideal audience, your ideal clients, whoever they are, you know, telling them why you're the expert, why you do what you do, the challenges that you see, the, the mistakes that you've made. Actually, there's another opportunity here. And that is to address the wider network that you have that themselves may know the sorts of people you want to meet. So have that in the back of your mind and every now and again, create some content that helps them resonate with you as well. Whilst they might not be your ideal audience, they may well become a champion for you and recommend you into the right place. And a lot of people, although this is a social network on LinkedIn, people forget how to network. And they only ever go in when they've got something to ask. They've got a, you've got a favour to ask. They want to, they want something from them. You've got to build that social capital up first, people. Build it before you need it. Is what I tell everyone. You need to have helped people before they will help you. And video is a great way for you to help people. One to many, not just not just one to one, one to many. So you can help people get out there, tell, you know, fix their problems. Tell their friends and family all about you and why you're the person that they saw that really resonated with them today. And you'll see the results in your business in three, six months, I guarantee. And the last thing is evaluating your video strategy. Um, if you look back at my videos from three years ago compared to where we are now, totally different. Things change over time. It's got to suit you. 
It's got to suit who you are right now. It's got to suit your home environment. I've got a three-month-old baby. I can't always record when I want to because he's crying, screaming in the background, and it affects the noise. So I can't have it in because if you edit that out, it edits my voice out. It's horrible. So, like, I don't. Take those things into account. You've got to be who you are. You know what I decided to do this year, and you'll have seen some of the videos, I get out in the field, I take a Lavalier microphone out, and I record live in the wild, like, where my brain's working, where I feel more comfortable I'm getting exercise and my brain's working better and actually, do you know what's really nice to do? Um, so don't be afraid to do things like that. Get yourself out there, do those things, but make it work for you as well as looking at your analytics. I'm not a big fan of analytics. I have to say, like, it's my weakness. Um, you know I'm ADHD. Everybody should know this by now. And Like, I, I see numbers and I'm like, oh, I hate numbers. Um and lots of people are the same. So, um, and it's okay to do this qualitatively, right? Thinking in your head. Actually, I remember that post the other week did really well and it was me doing X, Y, and Z. Let's do more of that this year. But make it a conscious effort to double down on the things that are working for you. But make sure you leave yourself space to experiment. That's the important thing. You should always be trying new things. People come to expect of you like, you know, people expect to see me in this environment because that's where I generally am. It's okay now and again to be out in the field. Don't try anything too crazy, but edge those things in. Try something a little bit different. You know, wear a branded cap, change how you dress, change your en energy, change the time of day that you record your videos, change how much you script versus don't script. Try them. Let me know where you get to, and I would love to hear your feedback. I've released a lot of information in this 30 minutes. 28 minutes 45 right now i'd love to hear your feedback on how this has gone whether it's any use to you whether it's been good and if you're following the series that i've released this in how useful has the series been have you come back and watched all the episodes did you find it hard to find the episodes did you manage to get to my youtube page where all the episodes are stored um, did you then go on to watch the full episode all those sorts of questions. i'd love to know whether how that works for you this is a bit of an experiment for me to something totally different I haven't done before. I've always said it's possible. I've always told my audience to do it. Now I'm following it myself. Good luck. Have a fantastic day. I'll speak soon.